Hello, and welcome to a special edition of Maricopa Now. I'm Mark Heinz. On this edition of Maricopa Now, we take a break from the classroom and head outdoors. Whether it's trekking across the country in search of geological wonders or conducting reptile research right in our own backyard, you can count on the Maricopa Colleges to give you the opportunity to get out of the classroom and learn. Let's take a look at a few of our favorite Maricopa adventures, beginning with a trip through the wilds of Southern Utah and Northern Arizona. A day with students who choose to give back on the trail and a program that gives students outdoor survival skills. It's dawn of day five of the 10-day geodesy. The sleeping landscape is awakened. The geodesy adventurers break camp and leave Kodachrome Basin State Park and head for Bull Valley Gorge, and then on to Bryce Canyon and Zion National Parks. With an adventurous spirit, Geodesy takes roads less traveled. Geodesy crosses streams off the beaten path. Geodesy's purpose, to give students an opportunity to study geology in the wilds, to see the rocks and their formations up close. I feel uh, proud of the students and, and proud of our system that we offer this. I'm always telling my students here on campus in lab that you know, we shouldn't be teaching this in the classroom. They visit Bull Valley Gorge along Willis Creek in the Grand Staircase Escalante. The gorge is a long slot canyon comprised mostly of Navajo sandstone. It is rugged and unique. That's the thing about the plateau. I mean, it's so colorful and diverse because of all the different weathering things that we see. Bryce Canyon National Park received its National Park designation in 1928. Bryce is located in southwestern Utah, about 50 miles northeast of Zion National Park. Bryce Canyon's very distinctive features are its geologic structures called hoodoos. These red, orange, and white rock spires and narrow fins are a popular tourist attraction. Nowhere in the world are they as predominant as they are in the northern section of Bryce Canyon National Park. With the hoodoos providing a colorful background, the geodesy team is told of Bryce's unique beginnings. Bryce started its formation about 65 million years ago when the oceanic plate pushed up the continental plate forming the Rockies. Geodesy is a journey of discovery. In the cliffs up here we've got the Navajo sandstone which is uh, Jurassic aged, sort of middle dinosaur times. The history of the Colorado Plateau is revealed through its ancient seabeds, magnificent mountain ranges, and colorful rock layers. Each one of those represents a, an environment in the past, and we wanted to really kind of weave that story, tell that story of what has gone on here and what's now Arizona and Utah. Stops along the road include taking a few snapshots of some of the locals. Zion National Park is perhaps the most unique environment in the entire Plateau region. It was established as a national park in 1919. Juan Toledo tells his fellow adventurers about some of Zion's unusual formations. It gets its name from, its, from the checkerboard pattern that it gets from the horizontal and vertical cracks on the mountain here. Early pioneers gave biblical names to many of Zion's landmarks. Two days encamped at Zion, the geodesy students get a day to themselves. One group decides to visit Angel's Landing. Another takes on the trail leading to Observation Point. It was a day of discovery and spectacular mountain views. Didn't think I could make it up here, but it's awesome, it's beautiful. Following a rewarding day on Zion's trails, the adventurers are told of the park's unique vegetation. The hanging gardens are hydrophytic, herbaceous habitats. 
that grow on the canyon walls. Instructors say that trips like Geodesy go far beyond the pages of textbooks. The students play an active role in the total experience. It's one thing to read about something, it's another to go and experience it, and then it's a third to actually have to explain it. As the adventurers leave Zion, they stop just outside the park to search through an ancient seabed that's teeming with fossils. Once again, student geologists showcase their knowledge and love for learning. I think what I found here at the time may have been the top of the sea floor at the time because right here you'll see we see all these brachiopods which are clam-like sort of things. But if you'll notice on the sides and the bottom you will not find anything. So I'm thinking this may be the top of the floor here. Some of the, the depth of their understanding is just spectacular. I just can't imagine when they go to their their 300 level class at that when they transfer to a four year university. Um, my guess is that they're probably coming in ahead of the game, and that, that's, that's really the best thing we can offer. Geodesy has taken the adventurers a long way. They've seen so much, and there's so much more yet to come. Like a stop at the Coral Pink Sand Dunes State Park in Utah. This windswept landscape offers thousands of acres of shifting red sandstone sand dunes. 50 feet high of sand creates a natural playground for any wayward traveler. <laughs> On the final chapter of Geodesy, the adventurers visit the north rim of the Grand Canyon, Balancing Rock, and Marble Canyon. All that and much more coming on The Next Geodesy as the adventure continues. I'm Rene Blatte for Maricopa Now. It's spring break, but this is no day at the beach. These students are heading out for another day of hard work on the Maricopa Trail system. We didn't know if students would want to commune with nature instead of Netflix. Um, and they came out, and they came out in droves. We really appreciate all of you coming out here. A partnership between EMCC and the Maricopa Parks and Trail Foundation led nearly 30 students to choose an alternative path this spring break. Their motivation for being stewards of this 6.6 mile section of trail at Trace Rios I want to be a wildlife biologist. Being out in nature is one of my favorite things to do, and now I have another trail to hike, so it's a win-win for me. They're out here, sleeves rolled up, they're pounding posts. Yesterday we picked up 33 bags of trash, eight spare tires. Clean trails and new signs will help visitors navigate their way through this area. Much better out here. While students gain a sense of what it takes to maintain a trail system. You're on the right path. Everything is well managed. Everything has a purpose. And everyone here has a hand in making a difference. I like the physical part because a lot of people don't think that girls can do it. And I'm showing them that I can. And then BioBlitz, so I get more knowledge about what's out here. The BioBlitz involves students cataloging the biodiversity they find in the area. The data they collect is uploaded to a global database. There's people from Ecuador and India and all over the world that are contributing data points. And so from our little corner of the world, we'll upload a bunch of species data. Rathel says getting in touch with nature offers some lessons that just can't be found in a textbook. These are genuine uh, young adults that are interested in growing and learning and, um, and serving. As this spring break adventure comes to an end, students leave this trail better than when they arrived. Getting to work on the trails is, is pretty great. Reporting for Maricopa Now, I'm Kim Getz. Outside city limits, well, this dirt road to the trailhead, these directions lead us to hiking that take us here.
majestic backdrop is actually the classroom for today's lesson. Mesa Community College's outdoor recreation program has everything you can think of, from hiking and backpacking, caving, rock climbing, to outdoor survival. MCC instructor Greg Guthrie is an adventure seeker who loves to hike. We're going to take them to a place called Hieroglyphic Springs. Here's the trail. It's located 35 miles directly east of Phoenix in the Superstition Mountains. The trail is a fascinating, short and easy 1.5 miles. There's a natural spring to enjoy and clear water pools in the rocks. It's famous for ancient petroglyphs carved in the rock walls by the Hohokam Indians. All right, guys, let's get going. Quick uh, checklist here. Everybody got your packs, your plenty of water. After the wilderness do's and don'ts are out of the way, off they go. Watch your step over here, guys. You're a hieroglyphic trail. Turn to the right. These okay, trips are all about exploration. I think it really builds a lot of character. No luxury outings here. These are down in the dirt adventures. One of the things that we teach is actually act like a native. That literally means think about your location. What resources does Mother Nature provide naturally in the desert? Prickly pear is probably one of the most important edibles and medicinals out in the Sonoran Desert. Students also learn to use the sun to navigate, learn basic wilderness first aid, predict weather patterns, and know how to signal for help. The jojoba bush right there is going to provide some additional shade and some windbreak. These students mastered how to build shelter. And this outdoorsman created this. Remember the jojoba produces that little nut? Greg is showing this student about finding a food source in nature, but the overall lesson is to always be prepared. The time that you get comfortable is the time that something happens. Most importantly, always bring this. There's water. That's the, the biggest uh, concern. That's the place that most people get into trouble. But to be safe, you don't know, bring a gallon. Another full day, another adventure, but not without a surprise. Nice! Students learn about themselves and what they can handle. The connections are made for life. Students come back and they keep taking the class. At the end of the day, the program is about expanding your horizons, growing and learning, and truly appreciating the great outdoors. From Maricopa Now, I'm Lisa Aquafreda. We have much more coming up on our special edition of Maricopa Now as we feature our Maricopa Community College's students stepping outside of the classroom. Don't go away. Nearly 3 million Americans served in Vietnam and more than 58,000 have their names inscribed on the wall. Those that pay the ultimate price in service to America. The Vietnam Veterans Memorial Fund, the organization that built the wall, works to ensure the legacies of those who sacrificed all for our country are never forgotten. I'm asking you to help keep the promise the wall was built on. Never forget, visit vvmf.org to find out how you can get involved. One class offered at the Maricopa Community Colleges is the first of its kind in Arizona. CO students are digging in and preparing for careers in sustainable agriculture. When Peter Condon moved to the Valley in 2010, there were very few sources for locally grown organic food. But people now want to know where their food is grown. They want to grow their own food. And small farms and community supported agriculture is expanding rapidly. Mesa Community College offers a degree in sustainable agriculture. It's focused on small scale and urban farming. Wayne Johnson Jr. is one of the first students enrolled in the program. We try to grow everything naturally. That's really what I'm about. I'm about more the most natural way possible so that we can have the most natural foods for, our, for the people that we're uh, attracting. Instruction starts in the classroom. The seeds are, are labeled by staff and organized alphabetically. Students get the practical experience of working on an urban farm on the MCC campus. Steve Preeb teaches plant growth and development. Students learn how to care for plants that are not native to the Southwest, such as tomatoes. We need to figure out how much water and fertilizer to give them to get them to grow in this environment. And that's all part of what the students learn in this program. Aquaponics is an advanced method of urban agriculture that allows fish and produce to be raised together. Plants grow on rafts that float on water. The plants filter the water for the fish that live in the tank. 
some plants you can grow really well in the soil. There's some plants that grow better in aquaponics. When you grow them together, you get the maximum amount of food possible for that particular area. Students can get a hands-on education in starting a small farm, working for a farmer, managing a, a farmer's market, managing community gardens. They can either get jobs working for these firms or start their own business. I definitely look to uh, go back to Jamaica and even help out my family that has uh, plots of land there and other people to really uh, help the country become more enriched with agriculture. The community garden at MCC can be rented by students. Candace Price explains why she is in the program. I wanted to have the book knowledge behind the dirt knowledge. It is really amazing once a person looks and sees how much they can actually produce out of just a 10 by 20 plot. Program organizers say the goal is to educate people in healthy and sustainable living. There's a big problem with childhood obesity, poor health, poor eating, and it's all stemmed in diet. By teaching people to grow their own food, I hope in the bigger picture to be a part of the answer to that problem. With their passion for producing healthy food while keeping the environment pure, these students have their sights on changing the world of nutrition. This is Deanne Kincaid reporting for Maricopa Now. This year, patriotism shouldn't just be about pride of country. It should be about love. Remember that to love America is to love all Americans, because love has no labels. Sure, I look cute now, but when my owner lost his job, it was rough. I was living on the street, and one night, me and this Cocker Spaniel got into it so bad, I wound up looking like an ice cream cone. I cried a little bit, but thankfully I got rescued, so I'm running, I'm jumping, all back to my old self. And I'm ready to give unconditional love, even if you put a lampshade on my head. It's rewarding to see your students give back to the community and take away life lessons. Whether it's through community service or research, their hard work and effort is preparing them for their future. Here's a look at some of our highlights from our programs that go above and beyond the books. Arizona provides most biology enthusiasts plenty to study. A walk through its spectacular scenery is often a living lesson in a unique and vibrant ecosystem. And one Maricopa professor has dedicated a significant amount of his work to the study of reptiles. Reptiles that live in terrain much like this landscape. Coming out hot. Her name is Red. She's an Arizona diamondback rattlesnake. Dr. Andrew Holycross is a field biologist who finds a tremendous value in bringing his passion for rattlesnakes into his classroom at Mesa's Red Mountain. Students can relate to rattlesnakes, man. They might hate them, you know, and they might think they're really cool, but either way, you've got their attention. Holy Cross received a $50,000 grant from the U.S. Forest Service to study the endangered New Mexico ridge-nosed rattlesnake. The rare ridge-nosed rattler can be found in southeastern Arizona in the Palencio Mountains. Holy Cross says their diminishing numbers have been a result of climate change. What's been happening for the last 10,000 years in the Southwest, right, is that basically it's been getting hotter and drier. You know, 10,000 years ago was the last glaciation event, so there were big glaciers pushed down across most, most of North America. And down here in the Southwest, it didn't look like this 10,000, 12, well, maybe a little more than that, 14,000 years ago. It was wetter. Right here was probably pine forest itself. So now we're going to have a positive delta H minus, but what are we doing to disorder? Holy Cross feels his field work mixed with the classroom experience opens doors for students they thought not possible. They come in and they change course. Some are coming in there to pick up biology as a you know prerequisite for something or they're headed off in some other direction, but then they take the course and they get turned on by biology and it changes the direction they go in their life. Along with teaching, Holy Cross spends time in the snake pit just outside his office. His rattlesnake workout includes caring for them, like administering medication, a passion that began as a youngster. As a kid, I had just cages full of stuff in my bedroom, you know, tiger salamanders, and I had, you know, garter snakes, and no rattlesnakes were allowed. Mom didn't tolerate that. To Professor of the Year at Mesa's Red Mountain Campus. So the next time you're out hiking along one of the many beautiful trails in Arizona, 
Don't be surprised to find Dr. Holy Cross doing what he loves, looking for snakes. Rene Blatte for Maricopa Now. It's an early morning start for nearly 300 student volunteers on a mission to go out into the community and do some good. It makes my heart happy to see all the volunteers the morning before they head out. Scottsdale Community College's Already Has Heart Serve and Learn Day allows students to go out, give back, and take away some important lessons. Obviously, there's the connection to the curriculum. It's an opportunity for them to learn more about themselves, their values, perhaps examine a possible career choice. We're going to redo this panel here. We're going to set some clothes. With nine community partners welcoming SCC volunteers for the day, this group is getting to work at Wild Horse Ranch Rescue in Gilbert, a nonprofit that runs solely with the help of donations and volunteers. The excitement of these young people today was that they were ready to plow in. The extra hands around the ranch are a big help when it comes to the daily tasks that are required to care for the 19 horses and mules and 13 burrows the rescue currently has on site. Health-wise, emotional, um, physical, just every single way that an animal needs to be taken care of. Part of providing a safe place where these horses are loved and cared for includes mucking and grooming and fixing shade structures for those hot summer days. Today, the beauty of this is we have three different things, four different things, five different things going on that we're not gonna have to do, which gives us time to go on and do the next thing. It's not easy work, but these students are happy to be here. I have no experience with horses whatsoever. I would have never thought how much like work it is, but it's worth it helping out. Students are contributing to a cause that has rescued and rehabilitated over 200 horses. It does make me feel great to actually be a part of it and get to say that I got to help out. Enrolled at SCC in the equine science program, this experience has Caitlin rethinking her future. Considering maybe what I actually could do with my career on top of what I already want to do, which is training, um, I think I definitely want to get more involved in rescues and being able to like give back in that way. At the end of the day, this group is leaving the ranch with some new four-legged friends, a feeling of accomplishment, and hopefully an inspiration to do it again. Just in a couple of hours, the difference they can make is, is really incredible. Reporting for Maricopa Now, I'm Kim Getz. With only two days left on their geodesy, the Glendale Community College students have traveled more than 2,000 miles. They've studied the earth and have experienced her magnificence. Instructors say that these kinds of trips enhance learning that lasts a lifetime. Each day's experiences add to an overall appreciation. By the end, then, you have sort of a, a tapestry. It's almost like a, um, uh, a patchwork quilt, right? You get the big view is the quilt and then each little patch has its own story to it and then by the end you've got this sort of nice thing to hang on your mental wall as an experience that makes you want to go, you know, go, go see the next quilt and the next trip. Day 8 of Geodesy was busy. A quick trip to Glen Canyon National Recreation Area and the dam and then back to northern Arizona and camp. The adventurers made camp along Rock House Road near the Vermilion Cliffs National Monument area. It's a dry camp and that means roughing it. No running water and no restroom facilities. When we're traveling in those groups in primitive areas, well, you gotta have somewhere to go, right? So we brought it with us. With only a short walk from camp, private accommodations are made available. A quick lesson on potty use is given. So oh my God. <laughs> you gotta show everybody how to use it or you'll wind up with a very messy situation. <laughs> I'm totally digging the toilet. The geology team uses an ancient method that lets everyone know whether the wilderness latrine is either available or not available. The soft drink cup method is employed. When the cup's in place, the latrine is available. When the cup is gone, the latrine is occupied. Wayne Johnson is a veteran outdoorsman. 
He's up early and gets breakfast going. His love for geology and nature began early in life. I started doing these trips as a student back in the 70s. And it was the instructor, Bob Thompson, that was here that turned me on to all these different areas. And like I say, these are, they were the best experiences of my whole college life getting out there. And I really like taking new people to those same places. The new Geodesy Day starts off by satisfying a hearty appetite. No other place can you get such a great scenery. Okay, we got With full bellies, it was time for Geodesy to push on. Breaking camp quickly, the adventurers were once again on the road. Geodesy visited the Grand Canyon once again, but this time the North Rim. While in northern Arizona, Geodesy made quick stops along the Colorado River, Marble Canyon, and Balanced Rocks at Lee's Ferry. And so Geodesy began to wind down as the caravan drew nearer to Phoenix and home. But there's always plenty of time to stop and look for more rocks. Nearly 2,000 years ago, Sunset Crater Volcano erupted. This fiery volcano ravaged the landscape and destroyed villages. Sunset Crater Volcano National Monument quietly rests outside of Flagstaff, Arizona. It is the youngest of the Colorado Plateau volcanoes. The lava flows and cinder rocks give any seasoned or aspiring geologist an opportunity to study a more recent natural event. For most people, the last day of any extended trip include time to reflect what their geodesy meant to them. I took a geology class just for fun. I really liked it, so I started taking more of them and started doing these field trips, and I, I really enjoyed it. Ever since I was little, I just kind of never grew out of rocks. I've never been really out of Arizona. I go to one spot in Nevada, and that's it, and I've seen stuff that I never really thought I'd see. Life-changing experiences and learning in the field for geology instructors the rewards are what the student adventurers leave the plateau with. It was just really heartening to see just the depth of understanding. I was kind of amazed. I'm like, wow, we really got them to understand it that well? I mean, that's our intent. Geodesy truly provided a vivid tapestry of how time and nature work in harmony. How nature has carefully stitched the story of this region. And seemingly, how it is a story that is unending. Jennifer Harmon closes her diary with this comment about geodesy. And so, as our 10th and final day together is rolling to an end, I realize how hugely monumental this whole trip was for me, for all of us. We're no longer clueless spectators, but we have now emerged into proud, knowledgeable people of this vast and beautiful landscape that we all call the Colorado Plateau. I'm Renee Blatte for Maricopa Now. We hope our outdoor adventurers have inspired you to get out and do what you love. Check out our programs and let us help you find your passion at the Maricopa Colleges. Be sure to stay tuned to MCTV for our great lineup of shows including Spirit of the Arts, Democracy Now! and Best Take. Also, check out our website at mctv.maricopa.edu and click on DeskTube. DeskTube allows you to watch this show and all of our regularly produced programs anytime you wish. I'm Mark Reins. Thanks for watching. MCTV has more great programming coming right up. Join MCTV every day for Inside Maricopa Sports and our daily community calendar update, Campus Calendar.